Dear brothers and sisters, as we have entered now into the month of Ramadan, every moment in Ramadan is an opportunity. Every moment is an opportunity for you to say a word of dhikr, to say SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, or Allahu Akbar, or whatever it is, or a moment, Wal-Iyadu Billah, to sin, which is the worst thing that you could do with a moment in Ramadan, or a moment that could go to waste. And every single moment is so precious that you want to make sure that you're using your time best. And SubhanAllah, when you're talking about the aspect of dhikr, what is the best form of dhikr in Ramadan? What's the best form of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan? When you look through the entire body of ahadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on dhikr, sometimes when you read about the virtues of one statement of dhikr, you would think that that's the only dhikr that you should be saying. Like if you read about fadal al-istighfar, for example, the virtues of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would say, I should be doing nothing but saying astaghfirullah all the time. Rabbi khfirli wa tub alayya inna ka anta tawabur rahim. Or one of the various iterations of seeking forgiveness from Allah. So, my Lord, forgive me and have mercy on me, accept my repentance. All of these different iterations of istighfar, seeking forgiveness. And then you'll find the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is receiving advice from Ibrahim السلام, about the seeds of the soil of paradise. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And then you find the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says that there are two phrases that are beloved to Ar Rahman light on the tongue, heavy on the scales. SubhanAllah wa bihamdihi, SubhanAllah al Azim, tasbih, the glorification of Allah. And then you find the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, in afdal al dhikr, the most beloved, the best of all remembrance is La ilaha illallah. Keep your tongue moist with La ilaha illallah. And then you find hadith Ubay ibn Ka'ab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he asked the Prophet ﷺ how much of his dua should be dedicated to salawat, sending peace and blessings on the beloved ﷺ. And it could take up all of your dua, and that would be sufficient. ﷺ. And we know that it's the day of Friday, the most beloved day of sending salawat on the Messenger ﷺ. So I probably just confused you further. All of these ahadith, you read them and you say, that's the one. Or inna rabbaka yuhibbul hamd. Your Lord loves praise. So just say alhamdulillah over and over again, right? So subhanAllah, it's every single chapter, you find these athkar and you say they're amazing. And which one should I prioritize? And then you find statements from the pious predecessors. And all of this is an introduction to the question, by the way. The statements of the pious predecessors, like al fudayl and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, when they were asked about prioritizing seeking forgiveness over glorifying Allah, istighfar over tasbih. And the example that they gave was that if you have a garment and it is stained, then you don't embellish the garment before cleaning the stain. So istighfar cleans the stain, tasbih, saying subhanAllah, are the buttons on the garment, are the embellishments on the garment. And so they prioritized istighfar over tasbih, but they never neglected tasbih. Where does that leave us in Ramadan? Where, as the Imam al-Zuhri rahimahullah narrates, one subhanAllah in Ramadan is a thousand times subhanAllah outside of Ramadan. This month in which the mercy from Allah is descending upon us constantly. And this is where you find some of the scholars start to give some beautiful insights. Number one, the best form of remembrance is Qur'an, and the best way to read the Qur'an is in prayer. The best form of remembrance is Qur'an. It is khayru dhikr. It is the best form of remembrance. So as you are reciting your Qur'an throughout the day, it's a part of your dhikr. It's a part of your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best way to recite the Qur'an is in your salah, is in your prayer. Why? Because in your two rak'ahs of Qiyamul Layl, you will combine all of the afkar just to have a proper prayer. You'll have takbir, you'll have tasbih, you'll have istighfar, you'll have salawat. So just two rak'ahs with the Qur'an in it combines all of the best forms of dhikr and that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of the best forms of remembrance are combined in salah. And then the Qur'an, well Qur'ani the dhikr, the Qur'an that is dhikra lil'alameen, a reminder to the worlds 
as well as a book that is full of the reminders and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You recite it at all times and you have that intention. And they said we can take insights from two things. Number one, look at the way the Prophet ﷺ's prayer was. Can you recite Qur'an in sujood? No. You can't recite Qur'an in your prostration. There were some nights that the Prophet ﷺ would stand in his Qiyamul Layl and he would read Qur'an for so long you would think he was never going in ruku' or sujood. And there were some nights that the Prophet ﷺ went into sajda, into prostration, where all you do is make dua and remember Allah. You don't read Qur'an in your sajda, in your prostration, to where if you would have saw him وسلم, you would have thought he died in his sujood. Can you imagine that sight? You see him in his sajda and you think he must be dead والسلام, because he's not getting up from his sajda. قام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بآية أم سلمة narrates two hadiths. He said the Prophet وسلم, would spend an entire night with one ayah of the Quran. One ayah. And then he would spend other nights صلى الله عليه وسلم, and it was as if he was going to recite the whole Quran in his qiyam, in his standing up. And so when the Prophet وسلم, would stand, he would read Quran and he would bring with his Qur'an dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Allah. And when the Prophet sallallahu would make sujood, then the Prophet sallallahu would focus entirely on dhikr and dua. And so the ulama say, what we see from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is engage yourself between that which is the Qur'an, the recitation, and that which you would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your sujood. And we have, we have flexibility in it. The point is, don't miss a moment. The point is engage in one of those two things. And the fact that if you saw the Prophet ﷺ on a particular night, you didn't know which one he was going to be in more, you know, longer than the other, is a sign for us that you know what, one night you might go into sujood and you have your khatam to finish, but you're going into sujood and you want to finish your recitation of the Quran. But as you got into your sujood, you started to make dua to Allah and you were immersed in your dua. Keep going, don't get up. Keep going, continue to remember Allah. One day you might finish your wird, your, your, your allocated times of how much you're going to do tasbih. Say SubhanAllah, but you're looking around and you're saying SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, and your heart is present. It's better to go an extra 10 tasbih and delay the next thing that you're going to do because your heart is in that tasbih. And so the best dhikr is the dhikr that coincides with the Prophet SallAllahu dhikr that is diversified, that your heart is most present in. That's the first thing. The second thing, the best dhikr outside of Ramadan is the best dhikr inside of Ramadan. Meaning, the reward for your morning remembrance and evening remembrance in Ramadan is even greater than what it would be outside of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ would not pause the morning athkar and the evening athkar. The things he would say in the morning and the things he would say in the evening after Asr because Ramadan came around. If anything, they are greater at that time, and that is the best time to learn the habits of those things. Okay, so to really bring them into your life and to not let go of those things. That would be like a person who focuses on praying tarawih and then they forget all of the other sunan. Okay, the sunan that the Prophet ﷺ would not forget to pray outside of Ramadan or inside of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us upon them. Allahumma ameen. And the third thing, and this is something that, that is really powerful to pay attention to with what the Prophet ﷺ gave us of the best du'as and the best seasons. The best 10 days of the year are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The best 10 nights of the year are the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The best of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is the day of Arafah. And the best of the last 10 nights of Ramadan is Laylatul Qadr, right? In the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us back to Arafah, Allahumma ameen. On Arafah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of what I and the prophets that have came before me have said, because all of the prophets observed the day of Arafah was, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Praising the oneness of Allah, declaring the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has no partner, who has dominion over all things. He has no partner, he has no equal, 
He is the only one worth seeking and the only one who bestows reward. And subhanAllah, that's the best dua in the day of Arafah. Some of the scholars say that that is the culmination of Hajj. Like when you're going to Hajj, everything surrounds affirming the oneness of Allah, right? Doing tawaf around the Kaaba, saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik, here I come, oh Allah, here I come. Everything surrounds this element of tawheed, this oneness of Allah. And so on the culmination of that oneness of Allah or of the, the days of Hajj, you affirm in the most beautiful way the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to Ramadan, the theme is what? غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ To be forgiven for all of the sins that you brought to Ramadan. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ Three ahadith, whoever fasts Ramadan, whoever prays in the nights of Ramadan, whoever observes Laylatul Qadr will be forgiven for all of their previous sins. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet وسلم, if I feel like I'm in Laylatul Qadr, if Laylatul Qadr has come upon me, the night of power has come upon me, what dua should I say? And we all memorize it. Allahumma innaka afuun to hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the forgiver. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Fa'fu anni. And the scholars say that that is the theme of Ramadan. That throughout the month of Ramadan, the prize of Ramadan is asking Allah to forgive you. As you are changing your ways and turning your page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the core of your dua be, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, as I'm turning my page, let the page on the Day of Judgment also be turned so that none of the sins that I brought with me before this month are going to show anymore on my record. Oh Allah, forgive me. And so it's not just the dua for the last 10 nights, it's not just the dua for Laylatul Qadr, it's a dua that represents the essence of all of Ramadan. Oh Allah, forgive me. And so in, in, embark on the journey of making sure that your dua, your witr dua every night, your du'as in the last moments before you fast are surrounding asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because that's the culmination of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, allow us to reach Laylatul Qadr and allow us to say the du'as that we should be saying on Laylatul Qadr, allow us to be accepted on Laylatul Qadr and have our entire Ramadan accepted. Allahumma ameen, aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'al al-muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu wa ghafur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة